Yep, now that I got the power all sorted, I decided it was time to clean up a little bit. Got my piles of junk sorted out, and after a couple cans of chili, I took care of all the toilet paper. You, I know, but now we have a clean colon to work with. Slate, sorry, slate. We have a clean slate to work with. You again, but this place is great. It's like a canvas that we can spray manliness all over. I'm sorry, come again? Yeah, yeah, like the, the big screen can go on that wall. Uh, uh, the couch can go right here. No. Uh, the carburetor can go over in that corner. Definitely not. It'll be like a, a, a shrine to manliness. No, this is gonna be a workshop, not a man cave. I need you to focus. Can't it be both? Come on, man, like throw me a bone here. Okay, we can have beer in the refrigerator, but no drinking while running the power tools. Okay, so that's a deal. So what's next? You said something about air last Right. Night? So next is getting air all up in hair. Okay, that was a bit of a stretch, but you know, why do you even need air? That's a great question. I mean, I have a great set of battery-operated tools. Why do I need to go to the trouble of running the air lines and hooking up an air compressor for another set of tools that essentially does the same job? I mean, is it really worth the trouble? Well, I decided I needed to find out, so I went back, way back, actually a little too far back, to try to find the answer. People have been using air to get the job done for centuries. Whether it's a sail on a boat or a modern day wind turbine, they all use air to create power. Pneumatic tools or air tools are special because they take this immense force of nature and shrink it to something that fits in the palm of your hand. But before you can start grinding, sanding, or hammering your way to mad making skills, you need something to compress that air so it can work for you. That's an air compressor's job, and it's the heart of everything that makes air tools work. A very early example of this is the hand bellows used by early smelters and blacksmiths for creating intense heat for working metals. It wasn't until 1650 that Japanese scientist and inventor Otto van Guerich really got serious and created the first air pump and started trying to understand the science of vacuums and compression. Wait, Japanese? Did I say Japanese? I meant to say German. Then, in 1776, inventor John Wilkinson, who is considered the father of civil engineering, introduced an efficient hydraulic blowing engine, which used cylinders to move air around. This machine became the early prototype for all mechanical cylinder-based air compressors to come after it. These blowing engines got stronger and stronger and were used mainly for pneumatic tube technology, which moved messages and items around office buildings, hospitals, and even powered subways at one point. And in 1871, a guy named Simon Ingersoll finally invented a drill that ran on compressed air. Then, in 1890, Charles Brady King of Detroit invented the pneumatic hammer and exhibited his inventions at the 1893 World's Columbia Exposition. And then it was game on for the air tool revolution. I now know that air tools are old school technology still in use today, but we've got corded tools and battery tools, and are air tools even still relevant? Well, I, I think they are. You know, compared to electric power tools, pneumatic tools are safer to use because there's no risk of sparks or short circuiting or electrocution. So if you're working near combustible vapors or items that are flammable, they're the safer bet. Okay, but I don't remember the last time that I was like working inside of a gas can. Granted, but air tools also have a higher power to weight ratio, allowing a smaller, lighter tool to accomplish the same task with potentially greater power depending on the tool. Furthermore, they're less likely to self-destruct in case the tool is jammed or overloaded. Okay, well, I can see that as an advantage. I mean, if you're running an air tool for a long period of time, even a lightweight battery tool can feel heavy after 10 minutes, and a smaller tool allows just for greater control and fine detail work. Right, and they're also generally cheaper than battery or corded tools as well. Plus, there are some tools that require compressors to operate, like a plasma cutter. Now you're talking! Uh, but what are the drawbacks? Well, you know, one of the major ones is that you need an air compressor, which can be expensive, and pneumatic tools also need to be properly maintained and oiled regularly. Failing to maintain tools can lead to deterioration due to a buildup of residual oil or water in the tool. Okay, but, you know, how many different kinds of pneumatic tools are there? Well, for a short list, you've got an air ratchet, an airbrush, an air hammer, and angle grinder, impact wrenches. No jackhammer, hammer, pneumatic hammer, pneumatic drill, pneumatic Whoa, 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 slow down, bud. Okay, well, we've got an air compressor already, which is one of the major costs out of the way. And I think the idea of having some lighter and cheaper tools is great, so this makes sense for us. So what's next? Well, 
Up until now, we've had to move the air compressor all around the shop to work on our projects, but if we install a series of hoses or pneumatic tubes, <laughs> if you will, we can have access ports dropped every so often and the compressor sitting in one place and get air, you know, wherever we need it. That or make our own like little bug subway or something like that, which could be fun. So, you know, let's, let's do it. So what do we need? Well, we've got a couple of options. Traditionally, steel or metallic pipes have been used to carry compressed gases because of their strength and durability, but they can be labor intensive to install as you need to cut metal pipes as well as the pipe threads to get everything to fit perfectly. Some people use PVC pipes, like what traditional sprinkler and irrigation systems use, and while this is common, it's not recommended, mostly due to the potential for flying shrapnel and sucking chest wounds. PVC is a rigid pipe that can get brittle with age and potentially fail, so while I'm being a little dramatic, I would rather not take the chance of a blowout. Okay, so you've told me what won't work. Have you found something that will? I sure have. I've actually ordered it already, and it should be here right about... now! <laughs> Holy cow! What kind of Amazon delivery is that? It's called Lord Prime. 30 second service straight from Asgard or your money back. Okay, I'll have to check that out. So what is this stuff? Well, I discovered the hot new thing these days seems to be synthetic polymers like high density polyethylene or nylon. These pipes are enormously more flexible than PVC and won't explode into a thousand angry knives. They also won't corrode like steel. They're light, easy to assemble and cheap. And while it is easier to puncture them versus steel, I decided to purchase a kit that has an aluminum core so I get the best of both worlds. My kit came with pipe, wall mounts, air regulator, fittings, access ports, and a pipe cutter and reamer, and I soon got to work on the installation. So I started installing the kit, and actually it's been going really well. I'm at the point that I've got my air compressor uh, connected to the system as I have it uh, put together so far. And I've done that using this, uh, this flexible hose. And you wanna use a flexible hose because as the air compressor runs and operates uh, and the motor turns, it shakes quite a bit. And you don't wanna be transmitting all that vibration into your rigid system. It can cause some fittings to come loose and just all kinds of ugliness. So I've used that flexible fitting to tie into my air regulator. Um, the real challenge here with this kit has been um, all the different fittings that I've needed. So I've got an air compressor that has a, a one quarter inch out that is going to a three eighths inch hose, which is going into a half inch uh, regulator, I believe, which is going into a three quarter inch uh, blue um, pipe. And just, I've had to make a couple trips to the hardware store to get the right fittings, which has been a little frustrating. Uh, I should have planned a little bit better ahead, but I'm impulsive, so you know, what do you do? And I know this looks really flexible. It's not. Uh, it's actually really hard to unwind, and I guess with that aluminum core, I thought it would be a little bit more flexible, but it is metal, so uh, especially if you're doing long runs uh, in your garage or your shop, uh, it actually takes quite a bit of uh, work and effort to get it unrolled and, and get it straight, so that's been a little bit of a challenge. But um, like I was saying, I'm about halfway through the project right now, it's going well, and I'm excited to see if it's going to hold air when I'm done. Okay, so the moment of truth. Uh, I've got everything all wired up. Well, wired, how about hosed up? I've double checked my connections to make sure everything is nice and tight. And uh, I think we're ready to go. So um, I'm gonna flip the switch and we're gonna get a uh, live view to see if this thing actually holds air or not. Uh, first, I'm gonna pressurize the hose to the um, regulator and we'll see if that holds and then we'll go from there. I'll spare you from having to watch the whole thing go. So uh, put the ears on and uh, here we go. 
Okay, so we've maxed out, and it looks like we're holding air. Um, the uh, flexible hose isn't hissing. Everything seems to be good. Uh, but what do I know? Uh, so we're at uh, 145 PSI. So let's start cracking the valve open, and let's see how we start doing. Oh, which way? Get it going the right way, Bo. It's amateur hour. Okay, ah, got some hissing. I'm gonna take it up to 60, and I don't hear anything blowing up yet, so. So far, so good. Uh, and everything seems to be holding up. Let's see if they've got pressure here. Oh yeah. That's definitely got pressure. All right, let's, uh, let's take it up to more of a working pressure. Let's take it up to, what do you say, like 110. Let's go 120, why not? Go for broke. There's 120 PSI. So everything, uh, everything seems to be holding air, uh, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is I will leave it at 120 for, oh, let's say, I don't know, hour or two, and let's see uh, how much the uh, pressure drops across the system to see what kind of leaks we have. So. We'll do that and we'll come back in a little while and see where we are at. So I actually ended up leaving it pressurized for around three to four hours. And when I came back, there was only a 10 PSI pressure drop across the system, which I think is pretty good. So I think you can put a fork in this project because it's done. Next on the agenda, we're gonna be looking. So now that we've got this done, it's time to talk about what's next. I'm sorry, I thought I was going to be doing the wrap-up. Right, no, remember when we started talking about this, we decided that I'd, I'd do it? I don't remember that at all, actually. Yeah, we, we, we had it, so oh, anyway. So you're just going to... Yeah, I'll, I, I'm okay. just going to... Okay, yeah. all right, okay. sure, no, go, 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 go. Yeah, that's fine. So, so now as I continue to try to trick this place out, I've got to build some racking for some additional storage. Sorry. <laughs> But I don't want just some standard setup. I want something with style and some pizzazz. And so that's what I'll be working on next. Don't forget to thank them. Oh, yeah. Watching. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Oh, and please uh, like and subscribe, subscribe if you I don't can. know. You, you know what? Let's get like, off my are, back, man. Do you, you even know, know that I'm here? I mean, I, we all agreed that I was going to be doing the outro. I mean, you knew this from the beginning. We talked about it during planning. We are doing the setup shots and all that. And you just had no